We're here in Hatteras, North Carolina, which is just inside the point of Hatteras Point, or Cape Hatteras, and you can see our boat is right down there at the marina. So what ended up happening, we were in the gale and we were hove to, and we were doing okay, physically. We had a couple problems. One was a major one, which is the anchor broke the bow roller and was laying against the head stays dead eye and actually sawed through the Dyneema. So right now the head stay is severely crippled and we weren't able to actually fly a head sail. So that, that was a big hindrance. Uh, the other big issue we had was the monitor wind vane broke. Uh, we had many boarding waves. We'd actually have waves crash over the boat and actually land on the other side of the boat. Here the boat sits. So the main things to note, the, the solar panel, one of the brackets broke out of it, so I gotta figure out how to reattach it. The wind vane looks all discombobulated because the, the junctions between the uh, servo pendulum gear down below and the wind vane part are broken, and then the head stay. Another big issue we had was with the hatches. So they leaked a little bit when it rained, but they seemed to be okay if you like hit them with a blast of water. They didn't seem to leak. The problem we had was the waves constantly pelting onto the deck were pretty much the equivalent of rain, and they leaked. And the entire V-berth got completely soaked with salt water. And this is where all the problems happened. So the bow roller got banged up, and the anchor fell off the roller. And then up front here, it just laid sawing on the headstay. So this area here, you can see the beam has been chewed up extensively and this thimble has just been twisted all out of whack. So even if this wasn't an issue, this here is a major problem because this is causing a very tight radius bend as the Dyneema comes down and then makes a sharp left and then another sharp left to come back up. Uh, these sharp turns actually will serve like a knife to cut right through the Dyneema. So even if this hadn't chafed away excessively, just the tension on a sharp radius bend will cause the Dyneema to break. So that means that this head stay needs to be redone. The plan for today is going to be to clean off the deck, get all the salt off of it, that way we can use it like a deck again. And then we're going to start doing the laundry because inside everything got soaked in salt water. So the hotel that we're staying in, has been very nice and they've allowed us to use their laundry facilities uh, after hours when they're no longer doing the linens for the hotel itself to wash up and get all the salt out of our clothes. So that's, that's going to be a huge help but we got to get everything out of here today. So the only dry place that we had was the quarter berth. Uh, thankfully that never got soaked in salt water so we were still able to stay in there and try to rest. While we were doing that or while Maddie was in there, I'd spend time and sleep in here, which now looks like a disaster, because it is, but there's actually a leak cloth that goes from here over to here. It's just put down at the moment, and then stuff from inside the cabinets has actually fallen out. So yes, those cabinets that are closed with a little latch so that they can't open, still managed to open and poured out you know, towels and cans and everything. It, it was a disaster. And then if we come forward, it was one fateful day. Maddie asked me to get some Dramamine out of the cabinet. And let me turn this light on for you guys. And when I did that, everything in here, or no, not everything, most fell down here. So if I open this, let's see what happens. Yeah, so my choice was pretty simple. It was either risk all that also falling out to put this back, or just leave it in the sink. And then another place that we didn't think was a big issue, were these double doors. Uh, they've never really opened before, so we never had to worry about them, but this was a very different situation, so it just dumped everything everywhere. Uh, it was so bad that the toilet that actually has the latches that hold the top to the bottom popped apart. I mean, it was fierce in here. And then coming forward, we have our bed. This hatch was leaking, and it was dripping water straight down, which at some times was over to this direction, at other times it was over to this direction. So the whole bed got soaked in salt water. So that's one of our projects today is to get this put back to normal, uh, get the salty things 
rinsed out. And then the salt water would also come down and fall into these cushions, which are still a little damp. And the problem with salt water is even if the water dries and evaporates out, the salt crystals remain. And the salt crystals attract water, so it, it stays damp. And then it's damp, and then you get mildew and mold and all sorts of problems. So we're going to take everything that got contaminated out of the boat, wash it, and then while Maddie's running the laundry, I'm going to be in here literally wiping down the walls to get all the salt off. So it's going to be quite an involved project. One of the bigger projects we have to do while we're here is take out our mattresses and rinse them off and air them out because they got soaked in salt water. <laughs> yeah. Do you need help? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. With the bed out, you can see the wood slats that we keep under it to get good airflow and keep the area mildew free, so to speak. So the important thing for us is to make sure that we don't cover up any of these little hatches, which are access to our water tank, or that which is access to extra chain locker. I'm taking, I'm just like pulling enormous amounts of hair out of this mattress from Morty. Before we soak it down. Alright. Nice let them dry in the sun. Forever. You did both sides of each one? <laughs> we made a whole lot of progress today. The floor is totally salt free. My clothes from the closet are hanging and drying, and that still looks a mess, but you'd be surprised how much it's improved. <laughs> the struggles. <laughs> <laughs> You're blocking the shot. <laughs> chilly out but um, it looks incredibly picturesque and it feels a lot more like a vacation now than a uh, pit stop for repairs. <laughs>
Oh, cool. Look at that. Oops. It's like a whelk. It's got a snail shell inside it. I love this. I love when you can see the inside of the, yeah. of the shell. That is gorgeous. Yeah, hold on to that. Yeah, that's awesome. Now that we're back from our walk, we're gonna go get some lunch. And then we'll keep working on the boat. So the mattress has been drying out on the foredeck for a full day. So it should be good to bring inside now, hopefully. Nope. Here, we're rested. Now it's time we start getting some stuff fixed. So the big projects we need to do before we can get out of here are fix the anchor roller, fix our head stay, and fix the monitor wind vane behind me. Now the head stay, I'm going to do uh, a turnbuckle. So it'll be a bronze turnbuckle with stainless steel screws. That way, if the anchor does bump into it, it won't destroy it as easily. Uh, with the anchor roller, I'm going to make a system to keep it captive, that way it can't pop out like it did. And with the monitor, I'm going to see what we can do. So let's start tackling that. Our monitor doesn't look that bad from the outside. So between the paddle and that hinge there, there's a little tube, they call it the safety tube. And the idea is, if the paddle is in the water and gets hit or anything, that tube bends and breaks and then the rest of your unit is spared. Uh, we carry a spare one of those tubes, just in case that were to happen, but in this case, that's not what happens. The problem is much further up in this area where the gears are. So let's get a good look at everything and see what's going on in there. So you can see this piece kind of jammed into here and it's supposed to go on top of this guy. And then these gears are supposed to mesh together, but they're not. So we have some work to do, see if we can get it put back together and we'll go from there. After a little work we got it all put back together. The only casualty seems to be this bracket here. You can see this leg here kind of flared out to the side so it can pop off. So I'm going to contact Scanmar which is the company that makes these things and see if I could either A, get a replacement of this piece, or B, just crush it back in, because I got quite a grip being a dentist, and if I put some pliers on this thing, I can close it down like if it were in a vise. So we'll see if we can't uh, salvage this piece and save us the cost of having to get a replacement. We just went to the general store to get some groceries. There's one store to get groceries here on Hatteras. And that's the general store. So whatever they don't have here, we can't get. That's kind of how it, we're finding out it is in all these small towns. Kind of get what you get, whatever's available. It's a very different lifestyle from what I'm used to. So I just need to somehow get the pinion gear to rotate on the shaft. Uh, that way we can get the screws in and out and all that done easily. Uh, just gotta figure out how to do that. One nice thing with these monitors is they're strong and you're supposed to be able to stand on them. So that way you can, if you fall in the water, you can climb out on them and use them like a ladder. Uh, but yeah, I've never actually come out on it, so it took a bit of courage to step out over the edge. <laughs> I slipped out the old bolt 
and popped in the new one. And you can see this is the old one with the lock nut on it. And this is the side that had the head, so it just sheared it right off. That was one hell of an impact, because these are, <laughs> these are hard to cut with a hacksaw, let alone snap like scissors. One really nice thing about these units is everything is open and exposed. So you have easy access to fix things when they break, because everything on a boat will break. It's just going to happen. So the control lines, they start down at the paddle, and they're led externally, so you can check them for chafe and make sure everything's doing well. And most importantly, this complicated gear system right here, it's all external. You can get at it with your hands, you can see what's wrong and fix it. So I talked with the manufacturer last night. They gave me a call. I called. Their customer service is awesome. I gave them a call and told them that, you know, this thing, what happened? And I asked them because I wasn't sure how these two gears line up. Because if you look here, there's a teeny tiny little arrow. So I didn't know if that's where I start, if I start on this side or this side, or how the teeth interlock. So the guy, uh, Mike Schlepp, he took a look on one that he had in his in the store and he said that when it goes in the first tooth lines up with that arrow into that notch so this guy goes in there and then you just get it put in and then tune it all up the best part is these are all the tools I needed to carry out the repair so I used the hammer or the mallet just to gently tap the gear to get it back in line because it was a little twisted out of place screwdriver for the Phillips head screw in and a 7 16th box wrench for the nut. That's it. That's all the tools I needed to fix the monitor. Now that it's fixed and the gears are lined up properly and everything's attached how it's supposed to be, what I'm doing is I'm adjusting this actuator post. So what needs to be is the rudder all the way down at the bottom has to be lined up perfectly straight when this guy is perfectly vertical. So all I need to do is adjust this screw simply by turning it by hand, no tools required, get it into position. Once everything's lined up, then I just tighten that little nut above this guy here just to lock everything in place. It's so simple and straightforward. If you are looking at electronic autopilots or a wind steering system, I highly recommend this one, uh, this monitor, because they use no power and they work all the time and if something breaks you can fix it easily i went to a hardware store i picked up a new stainless steel bolt for 55 cents that was the total cost of the repair let's get some drinks I mean, there are definitely pros to the ICW. You get yeah. to meet a lot more people. It's and pretty, it's apparently. Pretty, yeah. So we'll we'll kind of hopefully get the best of both worlds. But who knows? Nothing has gone according to plan yet. <laughs> pretty much, you just boil the package. This time, there you go. Yes. Then you just pour it out over rice. Instant Indian food. Thanks so much for watching, and if you want to become a sailing buddy, you can click the link down below to our Patreon account. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel, and when you click subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell in the annotation. That way you get notifications as soon as our next video is uploaded. Thanks so much!